scripture that, that just captured uh, my heart this morning as I read it from uh, St. John chapter number 16. I want to read verses 12 <coughs> through 16, but I want to read them to you in the Passion Translation. So you may not have that. I don't know if we have it, but follow along. And, and uh, my, my version of the Passion here obviously is not in red. It's not red letter. But these are the words of Jesus. Please listen. Listen to this now. Listen. Listen with your heart, right? And, and then let what comes through your heart, let that illuminate your mind. And I know it kind of works the other way in, 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 a, in, a, in a more biblical kind of theological context. And oftentimes we try to, we try to master God, God mentally, the MDiv, right? Master of Divinity. Uh, um, uh, we, tr we try to capture God mentally. Um, and, and an unrenewed, ungenerated mind can't do that. So, so Paul asks us to enter into this constant um, work, this constant activity of, of the transformation of our minds, right? And the more my mind is transformed, um, the, the more I might be able to conceive him. I don't even know if that's true, but <laughs> the mind has to be transformed. Listen to the words of Jesus now. Really, literally on the eve of, of um, the cross and, and all of that and leaving, the and, and on, on the eve of leaving the earth. Here, here, here's what he says. St. John 16, beginning with verse number 12. And of course, this Bible would be the smallest print that I own. And so I have this, and I do it like this. Mind your business. Listen to him now. There is so much more I would like to say to you, but it's more than you can grasp at this moment. But when the truth-giving spirit comes, he will unveil the reality, listen, of every truth within you. He won't speak of his own, but only what he hears from the Father. And he will reveal prophetically to you what is to come. He will glorify me on, on the earth, for he will receive from me what is mine, listen, and reveal it to you. Everything that belongs to the Father belongs to me. Did you catch what he said there? That the Holy Spirit will reveal everything that's mine to you. And oh, by the way, everything the Father has belongs yes. to me. Yes. So everything the Father has belongs to me. Yes. Are you catching this? This is really something. That's why I say that the divine encourager will receive what is mine and reveal it to you. Soon, you won't see me any longer. But then, after a little while, you will see me in a new way. The work of the Holy Spirit is to bring us to a place where we see him in a new way. And the new way that we see him, we see... You know that what's available to us is the ability, uh, not on our own, not of our own ability, but because of the work of the Holy Spirit, I can see Jesus in a new way every single day. Yes, sir. Yes, I can. It is the promise of the Lord Jesus himself that the Holy Spirit will work in us in such a way that he will reveal, King James, NIV, some of the other translations says, he will reveal all truth to us. Yeah. He is the revelator. Yes. And so, listen, I want that to be the backdrop in your mind and in your heart as we worship this morning. Yeah. That we are worshiping, we're worshiping a Savior who before he left put everything in place for you to live your best life yeah. in him. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. And we live it, we live it by the revelation of the Holy Spirit of who he is in and through yes. us. 
And so when I think of passages of scripture that say, I can do all things through Christ yes, who strengthens me, this passage puts that in a different light. Yep. When I think of the passage that says, greater is he that is in me, yeah. this passage puts that oh, in a greater light. Yes, because sir. Holy Spirit yes, is abiding on the inside, doing a revelatory work in our lives. Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Yes. He is doing it. It's critical this morning that as we come to worship our Father, as we come to worship our King, that we understand we're not worshiping in the dark. No, sir. We're not <laughs> worshiping, to, as Paul that. said on Mars Hill, to the unknown God. No, he is known he to is. us. The work of the Holy Spirit reveals him more and more every single day. I ought to be increasing in my relationship with Jesus, not decreasing, because Holy Spirit is working on the inside, making him more known to me, making him more real to me, more relevant to me. Are you, are you? Yes, sir. So, Father, this morning, as we worship, we say thank you. That you so love the world that you gave your only begotten son. And to the son, to the king supreme, we say thank you. Because you gave your life and you rose and gave us victory. But that if that weren't enough, if the Lord has so much. But then you sent the comforter. You sent the revelator. You sent him. You sent Holy Spirit and he abides with us. And he is revealing to us every single day, all day long, who you are and what you're able to do in and through our lives. We thank you. And it is from this premise this morning that we worship you, that we honor you, that we glorify you, that we magnify you. Thank you for the revelation of who you are. The more I know about you, the more I come to know about me. And the final analysis is, Without you, I can do nothing. This morning, I can't praise you. I can't worship you. I can't do anything without you. So, Holy Spirit, do your work in this place. Do your work in this place. I pray that the curtain of darkness would be rolled back now. I pray that the clouds that loom heavy over our head would be blown away now. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Have your way in every song. Have your way in the clapping of our hands. Have your way in the stomping of our feet. Have your way in the lifting of our voice. Have your way in the testimonies. Have your way. Show us the glory. Show us the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Lord Jesus, we will see you this morning. We will see you this morning. We will see you as healer. We will see you as deliverer. We will see you as waymaker. We will see you this morning. Show us your glory now. Be glorified in the midst of this your people. And we thank you. And we praise you. And we praise you. And we praise you. And we praise you.
Acts 2, 42 through 46 or 47, and some of the other biblical metrics in Scripture. I'm not sure how you flesh that out. But I'm sure of what the Word says. Yes, I'm, I'm not pro-virtual or con-virtual. Please, I'm, I'm not. It's that, you, you know, through the pandemic, when things were shut down, um, necessity, we discovered, is the mother of invention. Yes. And you will find a way to meet if you want to meet. Amen. Um, but the Bible says, don't forsake coming together. That's right. That's right. Are you okay? That's don't forsake coming together. Yeah. It's easy to stay home. It is. It, you know, I don't even need a good excuse to stay home. Amen. I've discovered any old excuse will yeah. do. Amen. I'm preaching better yeah. than you saying amen. Yeah. But I'm looking you right in your eye and I'm saying this. This is not good. Listen to listen to the words of the Apostle Paul. Then we're going to go to communion. And then the preacher is going to come. I don't know, y'all owe Pastor George a lot of time this morning. When he get up, just tell him to take his time. Um, of sorts, now, of sorts, Paul was doing distance ministry. Paul would write letters and send them where he couldn't be. Are you okay? It would be a stretch to say it was virtual. Because when the people finally saw Paul, they said, that's Paul. We thought Paul was 6'4", 250. <laughs> Muscles coming out of his muscle. Because that's the way he wrote. He wrote strong, but his physical presence was the opposite. Right? So, but of so he was doing distance ministry. Listen to what Paul writes to a church that up until this point he had never been to. He had never been to. Are you, are you okay? Now, I, the only Bible I brought in the sanctuary was my passion. Uh, so I just, I'm going to read it to you there. Romans chapter 1. Get your, get your communion cup in your hand just so you know we're going somewhere. Okay? <laughs> this is a reminder that we're going somewhere. But bring your focus to this passage. Romans chapter 1, verse, oh uh, Lord, small print. Jesus, help us. Verse 10. Let's read a few verses. Verse 10 through 12. Let's read these. Now listen to what Paul says. Paul says, my desire and constant prayer is that I would succeed in coming to you. According to the plan and timing of God, I yearn to come and be face to face with you and get to know you. Look at somebody and tell them, I want to be face to face. You know, face to face is the strongest position of intimacy. That's the greatest position of intimacy is face to face. Are you okay? Oh, Lord. Pastor George, we almost out of your way, man. He says, I yearn to come and to be face to face with you and get to know you. Getting to know you. And you know all about you. Y'all remember that song? Yeah. 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 That's what Saturday, Pastor Craig hit the thing. Yeah. He said it. You're missing these opportunities to, to sit at a table together and, and come face to face and get to know each other. You live beneath your privilege. That's what other folks are saying. Yeah. Yeah. He says, For I long to impart to you some spiritual gift that will empower you and stand strong in your faith. Yeah. Listen, verse 13. Now, this means that when we come together, everybody say come together. Come together. When we come together and are side by side, with, now listen now, he's described a couple of positions now. Face to face and side by side. Mm -hmm. Face to face and side by side, something wonderful will be released we can expect to be co-encouraged yes, and co-comforted by each other's yes, faith. Yes, but it only happens when we choose to come together. Now reach over and tell your neighbor, I'm here to comfort you. I'm here to encourage you. But I am also here to be comforted by you and encouraged by you. Now let me say this, 
if you're watching virtually, you didn't get in on that. So oh, I Because you failed to come. Yes, you have to. You failed. You can be mad, but you're going to have to be mad with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's his word. It, it's easy to stay home. And there are multiple reasons to do so. But according to the word, ain't none of them good enough. The blessing is in the pressing. That's what the old folks used to tell me. I heard my grandfather say it so many times. He said, Butchie, the blessing is in the in the pressing. And my name ain't Butchie. No. But I said, yes, sir. <laughs> Y'all remember granddad called everybody Butchie. He called me being them Butchie. Fraud, rabbit, scam. You know who I'm talking to. That's what he would say. The blessing is in the pressing. Paul said, I press. Yeah. Yeah. Better. Yes, sir. I, I, I believe what sis said. If we are not careful, we will only have a casual relationship with the word of God. Amen. That scares me. Me too. That, that scares, scares me for my life. It scares me for your life. It scares me for the life of the church. It's got to be more than... <sighs> we got a poster downstairs. Part of the poster says, With, without me, my Bible is useless. That's not sacrilege, that's truth. Yeah. It's just another dusty book among your other dusty books with your unread self. Because if we can't get it in a three minute video clip, we don't want it. It, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that long gone is the discipline of sitting down and reading a book. I had somebody ask me a couple weeks ago, this was before I preached. I had preached there multiple times and they came over to me and they, they whispered in my ear and said, listen, where did you go to seminary? <laughs> I just laughed. I, I just laughed. I said, then I got excused from college. What you talking about? Said, man, they asked me to leave. <laughs> you talking about? Said, I got uninvited and I was paid to be there. <laughs> God is willing to take you as deeply in His Word as you are willing to go. But it is not an easy trip. It's not. He's, but he's willing to take you. Are we okay? Amen. That's a powerful passage, isn't it? Yes, it is. For all of my virtual brothers and sisters out there, you miss out. You miss out. And so, you have your elements. Pastor Craig, he wouldn't sit down. I asked him to stand. He wouldn't sit down. That was, I should have known I was talking too long. <laughs> Tell them, I'll, I'll come, would you come up here and stand? Now the Bible tells us that on the same night in which the Lord Jesus was betrayed, you know, he, he had the disciples gathered and he took, he took bread and he, he broke it and he said, listen, I want you to take and eat this. This is, this is my body broken for you. This, you this, listen, I'm, I'm about to make the ultimate sacrifice for you. One of the things I love about this moment is um, what we provide for you is um, as as sacrament goes is incomplete. Amen. You have the wafer. We provide that. You have the juice. We provide that. But sacrament is incomplete without the third element. Amen. The third element is your heart. Yes, Only you can provide that. Yes, That's what you bring to the table of fellowship. That's what you bring to communion. When it comes time for communion, you, you come hands, I didn't, I didn't get my wafer. I didn't get my juice. Well, did he get your heart? Amen. Don't forget what you bring. Amen. And in this moment, it, it, is, it is equally important to the wafer and the juice. 
It's equally important to his body and his blood. For with the heart, man believes. With the heart, man believes. Right? The wafer and the juice alone are simply wafer and juice. And we understand the, the symbolism and the power uh, and, and the, the, the inner day of the energy that, that is associated with this. But without your heart, yes, sir. it's an appetizer. Right. And a small one at that. Do you, you get this? Amen. And so he said, this is my body broken for you. You take it. You eat this. And as you eat this, you remember my death and my suffering till I come. Pastor Craig, will you pray over the bread for us? Father, Lord, we thank you for this bread, which is the type of thy body that was broken for us on the Calvary. Lord, we ask you to look upon us, search our hearts, search our minds. If there's anything that would make us unworthy to receive, we ask you to forgive us, Lord, and Jesus. to give us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. As you bring your heart to this moment, as you search it, as you ask forgiveness, ask for his cleansing power. Receive that. As you do that in this moment, let's eat together. And the Bible says, likewise, he took the cup. And he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Everything old is old. It's all new now. The Bible tells us that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission or forgiveness of sins. Jesus died once and for all. Amen. 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 Once and for all. Even people who are involved in the most heinous of sins, he died once and for all. Now, if he died for everybody, why would we keep anybody away? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to let you wrestle with that in this moment. Yeah. It's the new covenant in my blood. Take and drink ye, all of it. But told me to pray over there. Father, we thank, thank you for your shed blood of Calvary, having each and every one of us in mind when you went to that cross. We understand it took your blood. And by you shedding it, choosing to do that, laying down your life for us, it brought us to a place that we could have communion with you and with one another. So we thank you that we are part of your body. Thank you for that shed blood that's still working in our lives. It's still healing and cleansing yes. and delivering thank today. You. And we bless you for it. Let's drink together. escort out of the building. He might be the only one who could stand between me and him. <laughs> Pastor George is coming. And, uh, Preach. Yeah. Don't you love communion? I love it. I love this. I love this. I love coming together. I love being together. I love face to face and side by side. Somebody need to do a series on that. Face to face and side by side. Shree, you like that series? Sister Cassandra, you like that? You don't know. Uh, uh, she didn't know. She didn't know. She knew I was going to give her that assignment. No, we need that. We we need that. All of that through scripture. Face to face and side by side. Come on now, stretch your faith this way. Stretch your faith this way. Stretch your faith this way. Come on now, stretch your faith this way. Father, thank you. Thank you for my brother. Thank you for your hands strong and mighty upon his life. Thank you for your anointing resident in him. Rise up in him now in this moment. Word his mouth. Illuminate his mind. Father, I pray, I pray ease of articulation. 
I pray that he would yield himself wholly and in totality to you. Lord, speak to us through him. Yes, Father. Speak to us through him. Lord, our, our eyes open, our ears open, my mind, my heart, my spirit open to what you want to say to me, how you want to lead, how you want to guide. We receive that now. Bless our brother. Fresh oil for yes, this moment. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's welcome Pastor George. Thank God for being here, an opportunity, and um, just to share a few things that he's given me. And I just want to share with you. And, um, Okay, it's not a few things actually. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's a lot of notes. I got a lot of notes. I got a lot of scripture. But um, we'll just see where he takes us. And if we finish, we finish it. If we pick it up again next week, then we pick it up again next week. Okay. Okay. I love that. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to be better. I'm trying. And the only way I can do it is get out the way. Amen. And let him have his way. That's good. And that's the only way you can do it. Right here. Out the way. Amen. Let him have his way. Amen. His way is much better than mine. His plan is much better than mine. Man. You got there's so much, there was so much shared. And um, if you hear some of it again, that means you need to hear it again. Amen. And Take it with you. If it fits you, if it doesn't, put it aside. And whatever it takes, you take whatever fits you. Take hold of it, amen. Um, I'm going to start with First um, Peter chapter five, and um, I'm not sure how far we're going. But I have so much in this. I'm learning that um, more and more that. There's always more than meets the eye. You know, I, I get fixated on a, on a scripture or, um, and, and I think it's just that. And um, as we've learned before, it's um, pre-text, post-text, and the text, and there's always more to it. And sometimes it applies to what you need to apply for it, and sometimes it doesn't. But I'm finding more and more, it's like, just keep, now I just say keep reading. Mm -hmm. Just keep reading. And as I kept reading, I'm like, wow, this fits too. Oh, wow, this fits too. And it's really, are your, your openness to hear what God is saying through his word. It's really your openness. How open are you? Okay, um, I'm going to start with a couple questions. I think this is where we're going to go with it. I got three, maybe four questions to start with. How many of you have stuff that you're dealing with? Everybody probably raise a hand. Or maybe some wouldn't. The other question would be, how many of you have old stuff that you're still dealing with? Mm -hmm. Last question is, how many of you are dealing with some old stuff that you gave to God and then you took it back? Mm -hmm. Last question. Last, this is the last question. How many of you are finally ready to get rid of all that excess baggage that was never yours or was meant for you to carry? You know? The first verse that I want to share with you is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. And the New Living Translation says, Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. And the Amplified says, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns, once and for all, on him, for he cares about you with deepest, deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. 
Cast your cares upon God. He cares about you. Cast your burdens to him. Give it all to him. He wants all of it. He can handle all of it. I can't. I can't handle my stuff, much less your stuff. But he can handle it all. All our stuff, he got it. We just got to give it to him and leave it there. Um, this comes from talking to several people over the last months or so. But however, I went to Florida. We had a chance to go to Florida. Um, yeah, it was cold. We had a chance to go away for a few days. It was just, just to get away. And it was, the getaway was actually good. The weather just didn't cooperate with us, you know. And um, while we were there, you know, we saw the bigger guy, Mickey, and um, just hanging around like little kids. But we also got a chance to uh, see a, a couple, a buddy of mine that we saw, we met on a cruise years ago. Years ago. And the honest, we've never seen them again. We've, we've uh, shared a text message here and there. But their impression that we made, I believe, they made on us, and then later found out that we made on them, there was just, some things are just a God thing, you can't explain them. Yeah. It's a God thing. And so we had a chance to just sit and have lunch, and it, we sat down, and it looked, it was like we just saw each other the other day. Do you have a relationship like that with somebody? If you don't, I pray that you do. Because it just, you pick up, it's almost like you pick up where you left off at. And so anyway, we're just sharing back and forth. And uh, I won't go into everything we were talking about, but we're sharing, and um, my brother was sharing with me about something that um, he thought was, you know, done what gave, you know, to the Lord, and he thought it was done deal. And um, he saw something, and it brought it all back. As I'm sharing with the guy, it's not even about him, it's about me. And as I was sharing with him, Something rose up in me. And normally we say something rose up in me, it's a good thing. But something rose up in me that was old. I mean, I, and I, not just old, I thought it was dead and gone. Mm. I really did. And uh, it's almost similar subject matter. And as I'm talking to the brother, and I had, I had to tell him, just because, so let him know that he's just not the only one. I feel what you're saying. And, um, um, years ago, and um, I'm not sharing nothing people don't know, so and it's me anyway, so, well, my siblings also. Years ago, my father died when I was young. I was a kid, I was young, young. I mean, single digits. And, um, uh, violence started situation, um, but he died. So I, I didn't, I grew up without a dad, a biological dad. But I love how God, I didn't know God, I didn't, but I love how he puts people in your path. As I grew up, my grandmother used to take me to church. And um, because my mom worked a lot. So my grandmother took us to church, and as we grew up, people that knew us, I can't describe it anyway, they just, they just fell into place. My sister could just hear, they just fell, it's like, they just fell around you, helped you, just, it's just like, if you didn't pay attention to what you didn't have, you didn't realize you didn't have it. Does that make sense? And so then, I, I started recalling, and I was just flashing when I'm talking to him and since we've talked. And I'm realizing, like, God has a way of just taking care of us. And it almost makes you feel as if it's never happened. Because when he feels you and comes in, it takes away all that other stuff. And so, um, as I was thinking, as I was reading the word, and, and again, as I was thinking of others, I thought of myself, and um, I recognized those people that were placed in our lives. And um, I'm trying to get ahead of myself. I believe God strategically does that, you know? And I, I mean, wow. People were just, I can't describe it enough to you. Take us places, dip together, and then individually, it's just like they filled in, literally filled in the gaps. Yeah. Until I was able to get to know what Jesus did for me on the cross and accept it for myself, the natural thing that people were doing, wow, he did exponentially. 
You know, so when you guys are talking about the daddy issues, mm-hmm. uh, he, he can fix all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All the gaps yeah. that you feel that you might have in your life, That's all right. the spacing and um, displacement that you might feel that you have in your life, the blood of Jesus covers it all. Yes, His love fills every gap, every pore, Amen. as if it never happened. Even though you know it happened, but you don't fixate on it. Right. So when it rose up in me, that, wow, this little, the lost thing, something else rose up in me too. Like, I took care of that. That's right. I took care of that. And see, the thing is, the enemy, Pastor was talking a few weeks ago, um, the battle that we sometimes face is a lot, a lot in our minds. Mm-hmm. It's in our minds. I can make wrong seem right in my mind. Amen. I can make wrong seem so right that I go do it, and in my mind, I was right, even though it was wrong. The battle is so strong, and, and I thank my sister for sharing earlier. It's so strong with us that we can just get off course. That's right. We get off course because I've talked myself into. A different direction. Right. And what it seems right. What does the Bible say about what it seems right to me? No, it's not right. Where is it going to lead me to? Destruction. God wants us to say focus. Sometimes God wants us to refocus. You know, we did um, those uh, 21 day fasts. I thought of that. And um, often and try to get rid of those negative thoughts. And if you haven't. Um, thought about those in a while, great. And I've mentioned this before too. If you need to revisit some of those videos again or revisit your notes again, revisit your notes. Those things are all the negative, all the negative things that we face sometimes and how we can overcome those things. We all have them. This is all I'm gonna talk about. Which is another issue, yeah. In itself, and it was addressed here. You know, we kind of push them away. And the guys, a lot of times, just push them down, down deep. And we compartmentalize a lot. And we can put stuff here and there, and before you know it, I'm full of all this junk that I don't need to carry anyway. And wonder why I'm in the state I'm in. I'm carrying things I don't need to carry. You know, on that trip, we're um, packing, right? And, um, I was packing it and I, I've been trying over the years just to, to carry light, carry lighter stuff. Just lighter stuff, don't need this, don't need that. I wanna I wanna be I wanna be on a go on a trip and just carry that carry on bag and that's it. I don't want to carry nothing else. And then um got there, done that. And then I um said, you know what, I got this nice stuff bag, you know, the smaller than the other carry on. I'm traveling like this. And my wife looks at me like, really? Yeah, I'm traveling like this. And so I packed my my shorts, my Hawaiian shirts, you know, you know, I packed just enough to get me through. And my little duffel bag, I had my little duffel bag, and I was good to go. I, I took my winter coat off, had a sweater, I'm like, I don't need that. I put my hat in the bag, put my ball cap on, I'm like, I'm still in Buffalo. I'm like, I'm ready to go. I was prepared. Florida's weather wasn't prepared for me. <laughs> It wasn't prepared for me. Those short, those Hawaiian short shirts and tennis hung up in the closet and just stayed there all the time. Cause I had a, I had a sweater on zipped up and I had to go buy a scully, you know, for my head and everything. But in the idea of packing, I started realizing stuff I didn't need or didn't want to take with me. We have to get so in our mind where I'm not going to carry all this excess baggage that I do not need in my life. And only you can dictate what that excess baggage looks like. It's some things, it's some thoughts, in some cases it's some people. I just know for the next, for the rest of my journey, for the next journey or the next part of the next leg in my journey, I don't need this. I don't need to carry this with me. And sometimes we have to go back to the Father and say, Lord, I need you to help me. I need you to help me release these things to you. 
And as soon as they come back up again, the negative thinking or the negative thoughts that come in your mind, Lord, I need you to help me through these things, through these times. Because just as I can let those thoughts ferment in my brain, in my mind, and turn things a different way or want me to go a different direction, the Word of God to see thoughts in my mind where I start to feel good about myself and good about my relationship with Him as He reminds me of who He is yeah. in me, who I am to Him. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I love how we are talking earlier because, like I said, people were mentioning things all through my message and how some things can be physical, some things can be physiological, and some things can be spiritual. I cannot be the doctor on myself. That's why I need to share. That's why it's so important to be with a group of believers. I appreciate what Pastor Craig was saying earlier, how we talk about the men's group and, and how we talk about the women's group, and they're so needed. And how um, Pastor Jay is working, Ted working with the young people. It's so needed because then I think just my opinion. We need him like never before in so many different ways. And mentally is one. Just one of them. Mentally, physically, spiritually, I need him. Because, man, left up to my own devices, I am going to mess up. I am going to fail. So, let's go a little further. What, what I found out is, when I was talking about earlier, that thing that rose up in me, thinking about my dad, um, this came to my mind. It, the root was deeper than I thought it was. And sometimes that means we have to go back and dig deeper and get the root out. Because as long as the root is there, like weeds, yeah. it comes back. You might get the top of it. You might even get a little bit under the surface. But to get the weed, to get the thing that, that's really going to suck the life out of that plant, you got to go deep in the ground to the root of it and pull it out and get rid of it. So, so the same with me. So the same with you. Because we, we, we're, we're glazed over the surface stuff we are talking about earlier, and I forget to get down deep into the... Because when it's deep, it's dirty. <laughs> we don't like to get dirty. But I need to get dirty, get that out, so I can stay clean. Does that make sense at all to you? In this chapter, in uh, 1 Peter uh, 5, and, uh, in chapter 5, um, it really, the title is really, he's talking, Paul sent a letter to the elders and the, and the young men of the church. And um, he's giving, and the elders really just someone's older and sent by God. And it's just, they're giving instruction on to people how to live their lives instead of just pleasing to God, like the elders of the church. We're here just to help you get along and to, get, and to grow. Your job is to learn, take it in, and grow. And so as he's talking, and, and, and saying it later in the verses, um, he's talking about how the elders and the people should be humble. Humble to each other and in what they're doing. They're, they're dealing with one another because it all belongs to God. Their, um, their service belongs to God. And it's telling the younger people, the younger the young men, to listen to the elders for their instruction. And then that's where it gets with their verse um, 7 about casting your cares upon God. Because he cares about us. But then I kept reading. Remember I said it's more to it? As I kept reading, you can look at it. It started talking about how the enemy is like a lion. And, and, and I started thinking about that. It says in the other scriptures too, uh, like in John, uh, I think it's 10 and 10. The thief comes to steal, steal, kill, and destroy. But I love the second part of it. But what does Jesus come for? To give life and life more abundantly to the full. See, the problem is, if you ever watch Animal Channel, yeah, I watch it sometimes, and you watch how it, and he says, well, the cheetah is, you know, and it's talking about the animal as on the prowl. And, you know, and it talks about how you see the little, the little uh, lamb or the little whatever antelope is away from his mother. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, and it shows the, 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 uh, the, the predator stalking its prey. Yeah. Because the prey went from the group. The enemy tries to get you alone. The enemy tries to get you by yourself, in your own mind, and 
starts dealing with you on stuff and starts messing with you to the point where you start believing some of the stuff he's saying. You need to come back into the group. It's safety in numbers. It is safe. Listen, the bully on the street is not going to mess with you when you're with anybody else. And not just anybody else, the right everybody else. When we stand together, when we stand strong yeah. together as the body of Christ, yeah. Satan doesn't have a chance. Right. And what do you mean? Why are you going to say that? Yeah, it's a bold statement. It's the truth. When a group of believers come together and trust on God, enemy has no chance. He can't win. He can throw some blows. He can try to cause some damage. But it's not, oh, this is what I want to use. It's not um, permanent damage. Mm -hmm. The scripture says, I think I'm in, um, just give me a second, I'm going to read this to you. I'm trying to get everything together. Well, that's another part here. Further down, I'll read verse 7. Give all your words and all your cares to him, for he cares about you. Verse 8 says, stay alert, watch out for the great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. You're not the only. He gets you to think you're the only one. I'm not the only one. It's a group of believers that are going through different situations all at the same time. But it's okay. Why? It goes on verse 10. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, say a little while. A little while. He will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen. Amen. A little while. Just briefly. It's going to come out of it. I think of, uh, I think it's uh, Psalms 23, verse 4. Uh, As I walk through the valley of shadow of death, mm -hmm. I fear no evil. Why? For God are with me. Mm -hmm. A rod and a staff, they comfort me. Going through. Going through means I'm coming out. Right. You've heard me say it several times. It's something you got to like, Grab hold to it and say, Yeah, this is going to pass. Yeah. Old Saints should say, This too will pass. This too will pass. Whatever it may be, it will pass. And what does, the, what does the word say? What does God's word say about it once it passes? Not only that, He's going to restore me, yep. renew me, put me on a firm foundation. Why? Because you can build high off a firm foundation. Yes. Right. When the foundation is strong, you can build up. Because the foundation runs deep. You know, um, I'm not as good as Jay or Pastor Construction, but listen, when you try to plant something or, or try to build something, you dig it up, clean it up really good, compact the ground so it's firm, then you put a, a vapor barrier over that so nothing comes up like the weeds that come up and try to get, get to what you're planting or what, what you're trying to make, and then you put gravel on top of that so many inches, then you can pack that down. Then you pour your concrete or build your foundation off that. Why? Now the foundation is strong. Some of the stuff we're going through is just to make us stronger. That's right. Wow. It is. You, you don't want to admit to it at times, but it's just to make us stronger. Why? Why make us stronger? Not for the sake of saying I'm stronger. It's more stuff to do. It's more things to do. He has more work for us to do. Where we at is not where we're going to be. This is not, this is, This is not the end place for everybody. This is really, as much as I love this place, this is not the end place for us. There's more things for the body of Christ to do here, out there, in the four corners of the world. What do you mean four corners of the world? Yeah, four corners of the world. He has things for us to do. So we're willing to do it. 
Are you willing to step out? Are you willing to be used by him? First, we've got to fix the repair, repair of the day. He's so good at repair work. I love the fact, um, probably told you before, my, one of my favorite shows is the, um, I think it's called American Restoration, it's the History Channel, where they would take stuff that's old and broken down, people bring it in, and then the guy, they were like, bring it back to new, like, like it was before, in some cases, better than it did before. Verse 9, stand firm against them, be strong in faith. Remember that your family believers all over are going through the same suffering you are. In his intent, in his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So, after you have suffered a little while, he will restore you, support, and strengthen you, and place you on a firm foundation. Yeah, I read it again, because I want to make sure you get it. It's just a brief moment. It's just a brief moment. We just got to hold on. Amen. And the thing about it is holding on, he's already proven himself to us. Mm -hmm. First, let me take it back. I don't want to say he proved himself to us because he doesn't need to prove anything to any of us. But he's shown us enough of himself to us to recognize the fact that he's got us. Amen. I think that was better, huh? Good. Yeah. And you have to recognize that. You have to recognize how important you are to him. You know, this morning, um, during prayer, they read uh, a few scriptures, and um, I believe it's Psalms 40, Psalms 8. And then I thought of John 3.16. That's how special we are to God. That's how much he loves us. Mm -hmm. And those other scriptures are talking about how much he loves us and how special we are to him. Sometimes those same negative thoughts you talk, you just you let roll around your head. Ha. Ah. To the word, get to his word. How special am I to him? Mm -hmm. The hairs on my head. I do have hair. It comes up from time to time. Um, he knows every one of them. He knows the count. And it's more than one or two to see him. My sister was talking about intervening. Intervening. When I spoke to you earlier about the people that was placed in my life, so I didn't recognize the daddy issues I thought I had because I don't have them. You see, I said that I don't have them. And when it rises up again, I'm going to let it know I don't have them. He placed people in my life when I was a young man. He placed people in my life now, my spiritual father, fathers, that help me, guide me, walk with me, side by side, face to face. Come on, man. And we meet, we talk. Yeah. That's why I got excited there. We, <laughs> and not just in a minute. I, it's not just not to be honest, it's not just the men's group we have. I have another group. Yeah. And we get together. And then I have a couple people I, I talk to, and it's not about me. It's not. It's about him. Amen. Because all I was getting coffee one day and saw a brother talking to another brother. It's like, what you waiting on? My car's in the shop. Come on over here, sit with us. I joined in their conversation. If you're willing to, God will open doors for you. Yeah. He would help. He would help you build relationships. He would yeah. just. He would just put people in your path to help you. You gotta want to do it though. Which your part of you want to do, I have to do now. I gotta come on. Yeah. To others, to one another. You know, um, Pastor, uh, one of the scriptures I had was uh, um, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 44. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. We used to talk about, we used to use the word a lot here. We don't use it so much anymore. Wonder why. Covenant community. Remember that word we used to use? Covenant community? What's it that embody? It embody. And just because we don't use it, don't mean we're not doing it. But think about it now. I need to reach out more. I need to talk to people more. You know, the pandemic's done a couple of negative things to us, but we can overcome all those things that's, that's tried to take away from us. The togetherness, the closeness, the fellowship, the relationships. Yeah. It's tried to do damage to that. And I, I believe the enemy has placed things in our way that's awesome to try to push us to the side and, you know, make it make me seem it's just me and mine and that's it. No, it's not me and mine, it's us. It's us. It really is us. Not just me and my wife or me and my kids. It's us. 
We have to be able to reach out to other people. We have to be able to reach out with the kindness, a gentle heart to other people. The people are in need of. And, and I, I had a list of people. It's just, I, um, I would share the ones I had, but single people, single parents, other couples, older people, a card, a text, a phone call, coffee. We need to reach out to others other than just our group. And I mean just people in my house, no. I mean just people in my church, no. We have to be willing to go beyond the four walls of my address or this address, beyond the four walls to reach out to other people to share God's love. People need to hear how good God is. People need to hear that he changed, he's still changing lives day after day. You know, I have a few scriptures I just want to share with you before I sit down. I, I said before, I think I read it. I didn't read it in the Passion Translation. I won't. Um, look it up, 1 Peter 5. I love one of the other tr translations now more than I ever did before to read them to see the other wording and how I still take the context of, I've got to go back to King James, and then I go to <laughs> the other ones too. But it's not just my wife, I do it all, so, you know. But he but showed me a couple of scriptures, and I just want to share a few scriptures with you. Isaiah, thir, Isaiah 40, 31. Mm. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yeah. They shall mount up on wings of the eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Mm -hmm. And they shall, shall walk and not faint. It's okay if you feel down. But if you trust in the Lord, he will give you strength. He will lift you up. He will you. Just go back to that verse 10 in First Peter 5, what it says. He'll build you up. He'll give you strength. Put you on a firm foundation. Psalms 34 and 4. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. Yeah. He freed me from all my fears. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. Wow. You know this with me because it's in Naaman. <laughs> Naaman 1 and 7. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. He is close to those who trust in him. Just as those negative thoughts come up, start reading the scriptures. <coughs> start reciting scriptures. Amen. It will free you. Mm -hmm. He will free you. His word will free us. Yes. That's right. Isaiah 26 and 3. You will keep, he will keep you in perfect peace. Yes, sir. All who trust in him, yes. trust in him, whose minds are fixed on him. <clears throat> Isaiah 41 and 10. I've got a couple more. I just want to share. Good. Don't be afraid. For I am with you. Don't be discouraged. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. Yes, I will sir. hold you up with a victorious right hand. <laughs> and if I stop right now and say, hey, I need y'all to give me your scriptures. I'm sure we can just get other scriptures pop up one after another. Yeah. Of the scriptures that you go to yeah. when you need to come out of something. And that's all I'm doing. John 14 and 27. I am leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift from the, the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Yeah. I love uh, Matthew 11 and 28. Are you weary? Yes. Carrying a heavy burden? <laughs> uh, Come to me. Yes. I will refresh your life. Yes. For I am your oasis. Yes. That was from Passion Translation. I like that. <laughs> I will refresh your life. For I am your oasis. Wow. I am where you get your strength from. I am where you get your endurance from. I am what? I am. Huh? Did you remember that? I am. I am. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Last one. I'm going to get off the way. Philippians 4. In four through seven. This is how you get through on a consistent basis. This is one of the ways. As things keep coming up in your life, you either let them weigh you down or you allow the crisis in you to come up stronger than ever before. Because in all things, give thanks. In all things. What do you mean, all things? 
When I'm down, I need to give thanks. When I'm up, I need to give thanks. I'm talking to Psalm, and Pastor Charles says, I don't get too high, I don't get too low. I'm right, I'm like, right. every look. And you know, the things he says to us, which I had to think about them. I, some stuff he says, I gotta like, let it marinate yeah. in my spirit. Yeah. And like, oh, I hate it now. <laughs> Philippians 4, 4 through 7. I always be full of joy in the Lord. I say again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Can we read that again? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, yes, which exceeds anything we can understand. Yes, His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Okay, really? I feel so good. I just want to drop the mic and just walk away now. <laughs> But not over me, but over his word. His word. His word. 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 Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You experience God's peace which exceeds anything I can understand. It's true. His peace will guard me and my heart and my mind as I live in Christ Jesus. Sometimes you gotta make it personal. Yeah, yeah. you do. You gotta make it personal. This applies to me. And this is what I need. So, what's next? Do you want to still keep that excess baggage? It'll weigh you down. It'll weigh you down. It will tire you out. I, I um back in the day, the Oprah show. Um, and one of the times that she lost a lot of weight. She came out, she was skating, and she came out with a wheelbarrow. Mm -hmm. Y'all seen that before, right? Like you did. And she came out with all of, that was the amount of weight she lost. In fact, in the wheelbarrow, and looked at it like, ugh, that's nasty, that's disgusting. Why is she bring it out and just yeah. show, she's showing people what she lost? Mm -hmm. We still carry around that red wagon, all the junk that yeah. I lost, I carry it with me. That's the I'm done doing that. That's right. I'm oh, done doing that. Wow. Done. Amen. So I ask you, are you done carrying it? Are you done pulling it alongside you, letting it weigh you down? Great work. Stopping you from becoming the man and woman of God that you're taught to be. Oh, Let it go. <laughs> My grandma likes this song from, I forgot where it's from. Let it go. This song, let it go. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. So, stand with me. <clears throat> As you pray. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for. Everything that went on in service, Lord. I thank you for the prayer before service, the scriptures that were read. Thank you for praise and worship. I thank you for our time of sharing. I thank you for our communion. And I thank you for what you gave me to share. Lord, I pray that we, that I let it go, cast it away. You've already done a good work. We want you to continue to do the work in our lives, Lord. And when those thoughts come up, when a negative thought come up, or when someone says something negative to me, or that negative thought someone said to me years ago comes up, Lord, I pray that I recognize it right away, cast it out in the name of Jesus, and move forward in you. Recognize it right away, cast it out in the name of Jesus, because it's all been done. It's finished. Everything, the finished work was done at the cross. By you sacrificing your life for me, for us. I am free, no longer bound. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for my brothers and my sisters out there that may have something that they're holding on to. I pray that you let that they release it in your name. I pray that they give it to you in your name. 
past hurt, past broken hearts, daddy issues, whatever it may be, we're going to cast, we're going to throw our cares to you, cast them to you because you care about us. You care about my peace of mind. You care about my heart. You want it not to be broken. You want it to be whole. And it's whole for you. I thank you for those that were placed in my life. I pray that we, that you, place us in other people's lives to help along the way. To help them. Help them bear their burden. Help them release their burden to you. But let them know that we're in it together. We are all better together than we are apart. And I pray, Lord, that as we seem stretched at times for different things that are going on in our lives, Lord, to give us extra strength and endurance to be able to reach out to someone else with a kind word, a prayer, a text, or just a cup of coffee. I pray that we just work harder, do more for the kingdom of God. We pray this in your name, Lord. I thank you for our pastor, first lady, Lord. I pray, I pray that you please just give them extra strength, Lord. They're, they're, I won't say stretched. They're out everywhere, Lord, sharing the gospel, Helping build people, Lord. And I pray that you just give them strength, Lord, when they're tired. A word when they need one, Lord. I pray that you help us to be good, good followers, Lord. Good sheep, Lord. I pray that the leaders lead in the way that you have us do, Lord. I pray that the, the followers follow, Lord, the way you would have us to do, Lord. And I pray that you get the glory out of it all. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' mighty name.